welcome to Ambassador Baptist Church. All the smiling faces here in the auditorium tells me y'all are happy and everything's going your way. Amen. You're loving the Lord. The Lord's been good to you. Amen. Those that are watching by video, we're glad you're with us this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer, sing some songs, hear some preaching, praise the Lord a little bit, and then go home and come back tonight and do it all over again. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we're grateful and thankful for the beautiful day. Thank you for the sunshine. Just pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit would meet with us today as we study your word, as we sing to you and worship you through music. I just pray that you'll have your will and way in each of our lives. Be with those who are traveling today, those who are picking up relatives uh, coming in to visit. Just pray you'll give them traveling mercies, those that are sick or not able to be here. And we just pray, Father, that you'll have your will and way in all that's said and done. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, 3-3, three, three, hymn number 33, to God be the glory. Great things he hath done. Amen. Sing the first and the last. To God be the glory. Great things he hath done. So loved he the world that he gave us his son. Who yield his life and atonement for sin. So 
but uh, just uh, make sure that you have that. Invite as many people as you can. Let's try to fill this place up um, and, and make them feel welcome um, for coming again. Um, and then um, don't forget our evening services uh, tonight. We do have an evening service tonight. Tonight we will hear um, from Brother Cone. Through me, but not. But you'll still hear from Brother Cone. Um, that he is on, um, on furlough. So hopefully we're going to try to maybe see if we can, you know, get him to come by and give us an update on what's going on in Thailand. Um, we did hear from a missionary a couple of weeks ago, Brother Andrew McClure and his family. First time I'd ever met his his, uh, his family. And his little kids are, you know, so cute. They're adorable. So uh, they were just running around here, and, and it was nice to have kids running around, you know. Um, it's always nice to have kids running around the church. So um, just continue to pray for them as they're continuing there. I think he said they'll be at least a year on furlough, you know, traveling around, and I'm sure Brother Combs the same way. So just pray for them as they continue to uh, do their furlough. Um, just a couple of thoughts for you. i got a fish story for you today. It says, a priest spent fruitless day fishing, uh, fishing, picked out three fat fish in the market. He told the manager, before you wrap them, toss them to me one by one. That way I'll be able to tell them that I caught them and I'm speaking the truth. You know? Okay, and then just another little thought for you. It says a wife or a husband who is only 85% faithful to their spouse is not faithful at all. Yeah. Hence, there's no such thing as a part-time loyalty to Jesus Christ. Keep that in mind. Thank you. Well, he wants all of us, does he not? Amen. Yeah. And so when we don't give him all our, our all, we don't get as blessed as we could be. Yes, sir. And so turn with me this morning to 159. How many of you believe there's power in the blood? Amen. How Amen. many of you are going to sing like there's power in the blood? Amen. On the first and on the last.
power in the blood. Is that correct? Yeah. Say amen. Amen. All right. In order to get that power in the blood, you have to turn to 162 and be washed in the blood. Ooh. Amen. If you're not washed in the blood, you have no power in the blood. On the first. Right, amen.
Amen. Well, amen he is, is he not? Amen. I can't ever help but hear that song and think the first time I saw the video. <laughs> When the McCamey sang it, and yeah. the sister got to singing that, and she got plumped beside herself, and Amen. screaming, he's still gone, and kicked her foot, and her shoe went off out of yeah. <laughs> the deal during a live concert, but she got excited, because he is still God, right. amen, in the good times and in the bad times, he's still God, and that's what we're looking at this morning, God is always present in the good times and in the bad times, now sometimes we may not think that, but today we start a whole new month of Sundays. Amen. Next week we got Anniversary Sunday, then we got Father's Day, we got this Sunday, we got the last Sunday, a whole new month of Sundays to preach the Word of God. Amen? And so I want to start the month of Sundays for June by asking you a couple of questions. And I don't want you to answer out loud. Try to control your facial expressions because sometimes <laughs> that gives you away and that's how the preacher knows. But I want you to think in there your mind can. and answer these two questions for yourself. There you go, Brother Tim. And so, number one, what one thing that has brought you joy in the last month? What's the one thing that brought you joy in the last month? Now, that's not points underneath there. That's just a question I'm asking. Just think about that for yourself. And then the other side of that is, what's the one thing that brought you pain in the last month? Now, if we answered out loud, all of us would give all kinds of, of different answers. It would be a wide range of answers because all of us are different. All of us go through different things. Uh, God takes us through valleys. God takes us on top of mountains. And so there are a lot of different things. For instance, for joy, maybe, maybe you had a salvation of a kid or a grandkid this last month, and then you'd be rejoicing about that. Or maybe some of you retired or maybe you're close to retiring. Or you've been retired for a long time and just enjoying it. Amen. Maybe you got to spend time with friends and family that you normally don't get to spend time with. They came in from Florida or someplace Amen. like that. And you got to spend time with them. Yeah. I know we had Mother's Day last month. Maybe uh, some of those memories. Maybe maybe someone had a new grandbaby or a new great-grandbaby. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a new great-great. Maybe not. But a new great-grandbaby. Amen. Or maybe, I mean, maybe you were sick and, and God healed. Or maybe you had surgery on your knee and now the pain is going away until your physical therapist gets a hold of you for a couple hours and then the pain comes back. Did anybody testify to that? Lord? Yes, uh, yes, Lord. Maybe you're anticipating retirement. Maybe God just oh, poured yeah. out a blessing on you financially or spiritually or something that you didn't expect. Yeah. All those things are, are things that bring us joy, are they not? What about some pain? Maybe you had a sickness last month that just kind of got you down. And it kind of brought on some pain. Maybe some have a pain because their church isn't growing like they'd like for it to grow. Or maybe there's uncertainty of the future or uh, none of us knows what tomorrow holds. Or maybe we made some plans and they didn't fall through. Maybe we lost a, a loved one and we have grief over that. I mean, there's all kinds of things that cause pain. Maybe some of you wives are thinking of husbands. When you think of pain, I don't know. Uh, in the world we live in today, people are struggling to work and find jobs. and So there's all kinds of things that can bring us pain. I know they say that inflation is low and all this, that, and the other. But politicians, I mean, when I think politician, I think liar a lot of times. Yeah. Or sometimes the word crooked comes to mind. Oh, yeah. But here's the thing. All these things and these questions I'm asking, uh, they, they lead to one thing. And that one thing that it describes is life. Remember the first time you saw a commercial for Life magazine and all the things that go into Life magazine? That describes life. We have good. We have joy. We have pain. We have sorrow. That's life. Every one of us are going to experience joy. Every one of us are going to experience pain. It's just a part of life. And it's, it's on the road of life. And all of us are on that road. Just be thankful today that we're breathing and that we're able to be on that road. Because a lot of pain is unavoidable. We don't even know when it's going to come. And a lot of joy, well, when it comes, it's incredible. And it makes us happy and we're delighted. And then joy, uh, we look forward to joyful things, do we not? Uh, we, we don't look forward to painful things, but they're going to come. But there's nothing that we can do about them a lot of times. But here's the thing. Pain can drive us to our knees. Right? It can drive us to our knees in agony. 
And joy can drive us to our knees in worship and praising the Lord. And, and even in our pain, we ought to rejoice and praise the Lord. Uh, did the Bible not say, in everything, give thanks? Don't you just love that God tells us in everything to give thanks? In our story today, in Genesis chapter number 29, uh, we're going to see Joseph. Joseph, we've studied his life. Joseph had a lot of joy. Joseph had a lot of pain. Uh, and, and we're not going to go through his whole life, but we know he had a dysfunctional family. Do we not? Mm -hmm. We know that uh, he uh, was disgusted. He was deceived, that his brothers deceived him. Uh, we know that he got into it with a dirty-minded Potiphar's wife who uh, lied about him, caused him to be going into prison. And, and Joseph had highs and lows. And those of you that are sitting here thinking of the joys and the pain, the reason I did that was so you could have fresh in your mind the highs and lows this last month that you have had and dealt with. Because we all go through that. It's life. But here's the thing with Joseph. Joseph knew whether it was in the pit or Potiphar's wife or whatever he was going through with family and brothers, he knew the main thing, and that is God, was with him. And you and I need to know the same thing this morning. It doesn't matter what we're going through, whether we're on the mountaintop, whether we're in the valley, whether we're in the joy, whether we're in the pain, God is with us because God said he would never leave us nor forsake us. And so who usually does the leaving in that situation? We do. We're the ones that get away from God. And so that's what we want to be able to say here today. We want to be able to live our lives so that we can be filled with joy. And when pain comes, we can still understand that God is with us. That when we're going through those things, whether we're in the presence of God or not, that he's with us. That God wants us to be fully surrendered and he wants us to be vessels that he can use. And so we're going to look, Genesis chapter number 39, verse 21 through 23 says, But the Lord was with Joseph. Got that? The Lord was with Joseph. Look at verse 21 real quick. Oh, that's where we're at. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed his mercy and gave him favor on the side of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed Joseph's hand, committed to Joseph's hand, all the prisoners that were in the prison and Whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Now how many of you this morning believe that the Lord is with you? How many believe that, that if he wants to, he'll make things prosper? We can all testify to that. God's given us... Uh, promise after promise that he'll supply our needs, that he'll take care of us, he'll never leave us. If we cast all our care on him, uh, he'll take care of him because he loves us. We just won't cast him, will we? But that's what God's promising. And so we can say that about our God. Now, just a quick timeline of Joseph. You won't know most of it, but uh, right now where he's at, he's experienced these things thus far. He's hated by his brothers because he was daddy's number one boy. He was hated by his brothers because daddy made him a coat of many colors. He was hated by his brothers because he told them, I had a dream and you all are going to bow down to me. And that kind of made them angry, made them mad. Uh, so what they do? Well, they assaulted him. And they beat him and, and they wanted to kill him, some of them. And so they didn't do that. They threw him in a pit to die. And then... That wasn't enough. They sold him into slavery. They sold him to the uh, Ishmaelites as they came coming by. So they took him into town and put him on the slave walk, and they sold him to Potiphar. And then Potiphar took him home and made him ruler of everything because he knew that God was blessing him. And everything that Joseph did, Potiphar was blessed. But then old Mrs. Potiphar had an eye for Joseph. Mm -hmm. She said, I, I like you. Why don't you come in here with me? Joseph loved God, and Joseph was obedient to God, and Joseph ran from the temptation, and he left his garment behind, did he not? And then she screamed out and said, oh, look what that man did to me that you brought into our house. And that made the king angry. Potiphar got angry, what did he do? Right. Threw him in prison. And that's where we're at today. He's in prison now. And here's the thing. Even though he's in prison, look at verse 23, the keeper of the prison looked not to the things that was under him, because the Lord was with him. Listen, it doesn't matter what you're going through today. The Lord is with you. You may think he's not, but he's with you. He 
said he'd never leave us nor forsake us. The Lord said, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Lord said, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, don't fear anything because he's with you. And so this morning we know that he is with us. So I want us to look at some things. If you'll notice in verse number 2 it says, and the Lord was with Joseph. Is that what your Bible says? Mm -hmm. What does verse 3 say? And his master saw that the Lord was with him. So do you think in this chapter 39 that maybe the Lord is with Joseph? Yeah. And that maybe the things that are going on uh, is all in God's control? Yeah. Do you ever think that the joys and the pain that you and I have, that God knows about them already? That God knew about them before they were going to come? And that God is with us and can get us through all those things? And so whether it's a good time or a bad time, God is with us. But I want us this morning to look back and see, number one, what the Lord has brought you through. Now, again, don't think out loud, but just think. Think about your life. Uh, as Christ followers, you and I, we need to, we need to take inventory uh, of what God has done for us in the past. If you're here this morning and you're saved, whether you've been saved today or 100 years, that's in the past. And God saved your soul, amen? And when he saved your soul, he forgave you of your sins. And when he forgave you of your sins, he wrote your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he put you in his hand, and he's in his Father's hand. And, and nothing can separate you from that. Not only that, but when you became a child of God, you became an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ Jesus. Not only that, if that wasn't enough, he promised to meet all your needs and supply all your needs. He promised that he would take care of you. I mean, think about all the blessings that, that God has done for you. Now, the past for you might be the, the last week, or it may be a decade ago. But when you look back and you see, look at what all God's brought you through. Look at all the things that he's done for you. Now, here's the thing. Don't get stuck in the past. Don't say, oh, man, I wish I could go back to the good old days. Because I'm often saying, man, if I could go back to when I was such and such, knowing what I know now. Mm -hmm. It's okay and it's good to look back. But what did Paul say? Forgetting those things which were behind. Now, we can look back and see where God has brought us from. We can look back and see where God has blessed us. So that will strengthen and encourage us for today. But don't go back there and get stuck. See, our testimony is built upon the completion of this statement. Let me tell you how God has worked in my life, has worked in my life. When we ask for folks to share a testimony about what, the God is, what God has done for them, you're sharing testimonies of something that has already happened, how that God has already taken care of you. That's your testimony. And so this morning, think about it. No matter what you went through in the past, whether it was good or bad, do you see him there with you? Do you see him taking care of those things? Do you see him keeping his promises? And that's good, but... Don't get stuck there. Don't get caught up there. Think about it right now. Think about how God blessed you when he saved you. Think about how he's blessed you in the past. Think about what he's brought you through. But don't linger there. Don't get stuck there. Which leads us to the second thing, and that's to look around and see what the Lord is doing right now. He's still alive today, is he not? Is he still blessing you? Is he still your God? Is he still loving you? Is he still never forsaking you? Is he still keeping all his promises? In chapter 40, the next chapter, we don't have time to go there, but Joseph's doing time in prison. He's a jailbird. Now, it's all on a lie, but he's a jailbird, is he not? And do you think that God didn't know these circumstances were going to take place? God already knew it. And I don't know what your today or your tomorrow holds, but God's already there. He already knows what it is. It may be that he's just trying to see when you get there if you're still trusting in him. And Joseph still trusted in the Lord, did he not? Now, his circumstances look pretty bleak. She lied about him. Potiphar believed it. Threw him in prison. There he is. But even in prison, the verses that we read, God blessed him. The, the, the prison guard gave him the duties because he knew that God was blessing him and that everything he did, God blessed. Same way with Potiphar. Now, here's the thing. Knowing that God is with you and that God will never leave you nor forsake you ought to bring comfort to you today. Even when you have pain come up, even when you go through valleys, the fact that we know that God cannot lie and that God promised to never leave us nor forsake us and to be there for us ought to give us comfort no matter where we're at. 
whether you're in the deepest of deepest valleys or if you were in jail today. I got a, a letter this week from the uh, uh, Parker County Sheriff's Jail or whatever it is for here. Someone asking for a Bible so they can read the Word of God. So we'll get a Bible to them this week. Who knows? Maybe they'll read and get saved. But God is allowing them to reach out to us and, and open a door for us. Maybe it'll open up a jail ministry where Brother Deacon Tim can go in every week and preach to the prisoners and, and see if they'll let him back out every night. <laughs> but Joseph had no clue and no idea when Potiphar's wife lied and he was thrown in prison that one day God would give him the interpretations to the other two guys that are already there in their dreams. The cupbearer and the baker. Joseph had no idea about that. And you and I don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. Yeah. And we don't know that God won't put us in a situation that to us looks painful, but it might be that God has got us there to reach somebody. To send a Bible that they might can read the gospel. To be a witness. To be a testimony. To invite them to come next week. So we can double our attendance. Yeah. You don't know. And so we need, to, we need to look around and see what the Lord's doing right now. God promised that he loved us and that he would use us. Did he not? And so here's Joseph in prison. Not for the right reasons. Not understanding what's going on. But... He's using the gift that God has given him just to do what he can do. Little did he know that by interpreting those dreams down the road, he'd get out to interpret another dream, and, and God would elevate him again. And so what is God doing in your life today? What are you going through today, whether it's joy or whether it's pain? God's got a purpose. God's got a plan, does he not? It may be a difficult situation. And rather than say, oh, woe is me, why not say, God, what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to show me? Lord, how are you trying to use me? And just open up so that God can. And what a great example that Paul gave us in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Now Joseph's in prison and he's there walking by faith. He has no clue why he's there, but he's walking by faith, doing what God's called him to do. God is blessing. God is with him. Now, if Joseph had gone in there and gone in on sight, he'd have probably done like we would have done. Oh, man, she lied about me. I don't understand why she lied. I don't understand why he lied. I don't understand why he threw me. Doesn't he know all the stuff that I've done for him? And on, 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 on we go. Now, Joseph could have done that walking by sight. He could have looked at his circumstances. It could have shut him down. It could have shut his mouth. He could have got thrown into prison and sat there and said, hmm, I'll just shoot him. Yeah. Not say a word, not do a thing, just sit there and mumble and grumble like a good Baptist would do. But had he done that, guess what? That would have shut him out of God's purpose and God's plan for what God had for him. Because by telling and interpreting those dreams, that's what got him out of prison and got him to where God wanted him to be. And sometimes we look at our situations and we say, God, why are you letting this happen to me? Instead of God, what are you trying to teach me? God lets things happen to us to teach us, to show us, to get us where he wants us to be. Does he not? Did he not say in this life you would suffer persecution? <coughs> but be of good cheer. He's overcome the world. And I'm just looking forward to that next step when we're all taken out of here. All those guys that are left behind and keep mocking me when I keep telling them that and laughing and saying, oh, that's just a fairy tale. Someone told me this week, said, I put some scriptures on Facebook. And they said, oh, that's a good story. And I said, but it's not a story. It's God's word. It's the truth. And one of these days you'll stand before that God and this truth will be your judge. And it will be. Because God's going to judge us by his word. And so but they don't want to hear that. They just say it's a good fairy tale. Or it's a good story. It's a lot of good stories, but it's got a lot of truth, does it not? And so, take a look at your present circumstances. No matter what they are, good or bad, guess what? God is with you. Because he's not going to leave you nor forsake you. He's with you. He promised it. And even if you're sitting in the doctor's office, like my wife was this week, well, therapy office, and you don't know what the next step is to take, God's there with you. 
She didn't want to take any steps. She wanted to get off her leg and get in the water. <laughs> but God is with you. It doesn't matter. Even if your marriage is going under, or your kids aren't what they ought to be, or everything in your family is a shambles, God is still at work. Is He not? Even if you're frozen by fear and anxiety because you don't know what tomorrow holds. I mean, the, the country's in a mess. Finances are in a mess. Now they're talking food shortages and, and all kinds of different things. And the air's so polluted. We can't, I mean, you don't know. And sometimes we don't know what the next step is or what's going to happen. But it's still going to work. And it's going to get worse. And God will be all that we have to hang on to. So I hope that you're hanging on. But here's the thing. Don't shut down. Because if you shut down, then the world's going to say, oh, look at their God. He's just a fairy tale because they said he would do this and do that. And they're just shutting down. And we shut down and we give up, do we not? Don't shut down. Let them know that God's still working. Let them know that God's still in your life, that God's still there, that God's still blessing. Smile and let them know that one of these days you're going to be in heaven, but they're going to be somewhere else. Unless they accept your Savior and accept what He did for them in Calvary. But stay connected with God. Now is not the time to back off. Now is the time to read your Bible more, pray more, trust more, witness more. We're running out of time, folks. The Lord could come back literally at any moment. we got family, friends, co-workers, people that don't know the Lord. Now is not the time to, to shut down and give up and shut up. If Joseph had done that, he'd have never gotten out of prison. And if we do that, folks might not get saved. And so we just need to keep on keeping on, do we not? Keep on serving him. Stay connected to him. Read his word. Stay connected to him in prayer. Those are the ways that we communicate with God. And if you're not doing that, start today. It's not too late to start. Listen to Philippians 2.13. For it is God, not me, not you, not your family, it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God is working in you and me to what? To, to fulfill his will and his good purpose and his pleasure through us. And so if we get to the point where he's trying to use us or putting us through something and we just shut down, God can't do his will and his good work through us <coughs> that he wants to do. Which leads to the third thing, and that is we need to look ahead and see what the Lord has promised for the future. Future's looking bright, folks. Now, not in this world that we live in and not in this country that we live in, but the future's looking bright. How many of you know or heard of the phrase spoil alert? Mm -hmm. That's when you text Brother Tim and tell him to score the cowboy game before he gets home and watches before he recorded. That's a spoil <laughs> alert, amen? We don't do that for Brother Tim. Amen. But, but TV shows and stuff, they, they, they give you something yeah. before you watch it, and they ruin the whole thing for you. Yeah. They call it a spoil alert. Well, I got news for you today. Spoil alert. You ready? Everything in Joseph's life is going to work out just fine. Mm. Going to work out just like God wanted to. Everything in this story, if you haven't read it all the way through, is going well. And God's doing exactly what he needs, even though you and I, don't have all the details of how our story is going to play out. Those of us that know the Lord Jesus Christ, that are saved and on their way to heaven, our story is going to end really, really, really well. Because you're either going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord, or the trump of God is going to sound and we're all going to go up together. Either way, it's really, really good. Because the moment you take that last breath... You're in the presence of the Lord. Now, how awesome is that? How good is that? That's what God promised, did he not? To be absent from the? Is to be present with the? Lord. And he's promised, and I know it's been 2,000 plus years, but it's still the same promise. That, but everything today is lining up. I mean, this. I mean, we could call this the, uh, the Jerusalem Times, because everything in it is lining up with, with the the newspaper today, is it not? And so, we're in really, really good shape. Now, we know, because you've already told me this morning, we know that he has not promised us that everything would be all rosy and cheery. Because he said we would go through tribulation. That may be pain. That may be suffering. 
I know many of our folks have had surgeries and gone through cancer surgeries and different things, and, and they're suffering there. But it's going to get really, really good. Because one of these days, we're going to be changed in a moment, and it's going to the eye, we're going to get a new body. These old knees and these braces, I won't need anymore. Mm -hmm. No more pain. <clears throat> Man, can you imagine, Brother Tim, what it's like with no pain? Because mm. yeah. the Bible says, well, I won't go down that road. I'll get all the ladies mad at me. No more pain. Yeah. No more sorrow. That's right. No more tears. No more suffering. It's going to be really, really good. Isn't it not? Yes, sir. Well, let your face know it's going to be really, really good someday. Get all excited, as the song says. Go tell everybody that Jesus Christ is king. we got a lot to look forward to. we got a lot of promises in the Bible. Here's the thing. Even if you're going through some pain, it outweighs. It outweighs nothing. The joy outweighs it all. The, the final results outweigh it all. This little bit of pain down here is just for a time. But imagine the blessings of God. Now, God never said he'd bless us all the time. But even in the pain and the joy, either way, guess what you get? You get Jesus. That's right. You get Jesus. He's in you. The hope that you have, he's there. Put a smile on your face and say, Jesus. Because he's living there. He's, he'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yes, sir. I mean, we ought to be the happiest people on earth, no matter what we're going through. No matter how bad it gets, and it's going to get bad. It's going to get bad for the church. It's going to get bad for Christians. It's already getting bad. I mean, things are happening. But it lines right up with the Bible. We simply just don't have to be afraid of the end. There's nothing for us to be afraid of. The Bible says, what can man do to us? God is going to take care of it. God's going to bless us, is he not? And here's the, the thing. I, I read the end of the book. Actually, I read the whole thing, but I read the end of it. And guess what? We win. We win. That's right. We win. The only thing now is to get some folks saved so they can win with us. We can increase the team, amen? Philippians 1.21, probably everybody's favorite verse in here this morning. I know it was Paul's. For me to live is Christ. Christ. And to die is gain. is gain. So while we're living, live for Christ. When we die, we just carry it off into his presence and live with him forever. But right now, doesn't matter. We just need to live, don't we? So right now, what you're going through doesn't matter. Whatever it is you're going through, praise the Lord. Because he said in everything, give thanks, did he not? But whatever it is you're going through right now, whether it's good or bad, let me give you these four things real quick. While you're going through them, if you'll keep these four things, then we're done. Record time, Sunday morning. Number one, trust him. Mm. Yeah. Only trust him, only trust him. He'll never let you down, will he? When times are good, when times are bad, when you're up, when you're down, when you're on the mountaintop, when you're going through the valley, keep trusting him. You're saying, well, can you give me a verse for that? Sure. Proverbs 3, 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord. Now listen. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall do what? Direct. He shall direct right. your path. You want to know what's the right direction to go? Trust him with your whole heart. Does that mean when you're going through a struggle or a problem or a pain, you start thinking, what am I going to do? How am I going to get through? No, that's not trusting him with your whole heart. Trust him with your whole heart. Lean not on what the devil would have you to think. Trust in him, and he'll get you through it. If that's not good enough, Psalms 56.3 is one of my favorites. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. So whenever you're afraid, trust in him. Whenever you're afraid, don't know what to do, trust in him. Now, for some of you, that means you might be trusting in him for the first time. Trust him for your salvation. Repent of your sin and trust in the save your soul so that you can go to heaven when you die. For us that are saved, we ought to be trusting in him every day. And only him. That's why the song says only trust him. 
Don't trust in your spouse. Don't trust in your kids. Don't trust in your job, all those things. Trust in Him. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. He'll take care of everything else. Amen? <laughs> Secondly, worship Him. Trust Him and worship Him. Put your heart out to Him in praise. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. <coughs> I think we've lost that in our churches. Yeah. There's nothing wrong. I mean, the Bible, I'm reading through the Psalms right now. I'm through the first 107 Psalms. And I mean, almost every Psalm is praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sing His praises. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. And when you're done with praising Him, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We ought to praise Him, should we not? Praise Him in the midst of our storms. Going through a valley, going through a storm, praise the Lord. And everything give thanks. You say, well, that's easier said than done. Well, if you'll do it and be obedient, God will take care of it, will He not? Trust Him with your... Listen, you, you put your trust in Him to save your soul for eternity. Can't you give Him the other things and praise Him for them? Just give Him thanks and praise Him? Yeah, praise for sure. And while you're praising Him, thirdly, you may as well worship Him. I said that, didn't I? Worship Him was the second one. Just making sure you're paying attention. 2 Chronicles 20, 12. Listen to this verse. Because sometimes folks brush off the, it's praise Him and worship Him. This is the first two. I'll get to the other two. But sometimes people push off and brush off the Old Testament. But there's stuff in the Old Testament that works and applies to us. Otherwise, God wouldn't have given it to us. 2 Chronicles 20, 12. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? All those folks that are telling me story tales and, and, and all that, God's going to judge them. Amen? So I'm not worried about it. I'm just throwing the truth out there. That's fine. You believe what you want, but God will take care of them one of these days. Wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. We can't, we can't take on the devil in the world. Now, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And we can take them on and put on the whole armor of God. That's how we're successful. Have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. You ever been there? Got a problem? Got something coming at? Don't know what to do? Here's the answer. But our eyes are upon thee. Put your eyes on Him. Worship Him. Praise Him. Thank Him. Give all your cares to Him. Cast it all on Him. That's what you do. You give it to the Lord. We need to quit handling it ourselves. We cast all our cares on the altar. When we get up to go, we throw it back over our shoulder, take it right back with us. And wonder, why isn't God listening? Why isn't God? Because we're not doing what He said to do. Thirdly, obey Him. I thought I'd work up to it before I threw that one out there. Obey Him. God calls on us to live a life of obedience. If you love me, you keep my commandments. If you love him, you'll obey him. We get in trouble because we don't obey him. We don't uh, obey him. We don't do what he tells us. Now, we get into circumstances and we know what God's word says, but we don't follow those circumstances. We've got a better plan, do we not? What that means is that we obey him no matter what. And we keep on obeying Him no matter what. God demands our obedience. Look at the children of Israel. You just study their life. They obeyed, God blessed. They disobeyed, God put them in captivity and, and did all kinds of things. They obeyed, God blessed. I mean, it's the same thing with us. God blesses obedience. God demands that we obedient. And the last thing and the most important thing is serve Him. Don't serve yourself. Serve Him. That's what he commanded is not. And not only serve him, but keep serving him. You go on through a pain, go on through a tragedy, don't give up serving him, keep serving him. Matter of fact, during those times, serve him more. Don't let your pain and your suffering and your circumstances sideline you from being obedient to God and worshiping God and doing what God said to do. That's what we do, is it not? Mm -hmm. Listen, don't let the devil win. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. As we stand with our heads bowed and eyes closed this morning, listen, the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. And so no matter what you're going through today, whether it's good or whether it's bad, God is with you. 
Now, here's the thing. Some of the bad we're going through probably could be good if we're doing what God calls us to do. If we're worshiping Him and obeying Him and trusting Him and doing what He said to do. Some of it we may be going through because God just wants to put us to the test and see what we're made of. God knew what Joseph was going to do in prison, but he let him go to prison anyway. Joseph didn't do anything to deserve being in prison, did he? But God let him go there, didn't he? And God used some things in a mighty way to let Joseph know that I want to use you, that I'm with you, that I won't leave you in the good or the bad. You just got to trust me. You got to worship me. You got to rely on me and keep serving me. And so I don't know where you're at this morning. If you're in the good, the mountaintop, if you're in the valley, I don't know. But I do know that God is with you wherever you're at. And that God wants you to trust Him and to serve Him and to worship Him and to continue on being what He wants you to be no matter what. And so this morning, maybe God has spoken to your heart. Maybe you're, you're somewhere in between the trust and don't trust. Or maybe you're going through something and you just feel like God's given up on you. I'm here to tell you from the Word of God, God has not given up on you. God loves you. God said there's absolutely nothing that can separate you from that love. God said He'd never leave you nor forsake you. He's always there with you. We're the ones that change. We're the ones that, that walk away. And so it's us that needs to repent and confess and ask God to forgive us. And He'll cleanse us from all unrighteousness and put us back where we need to be. Now, I can't do it for you. You can't do it for me. But with God's help, you can do it for you. Amen? Our Father, we love you today. We're thankful that we can look at Joseph's life and we can see all the things that he went through and all the problems that he had and all the pain with his family, with his brothers, with Potiphar's wife, with Potiphar, with the, the folks in the jail and, and everything that he went through. And the Word of God says that you were with him through the whole thing and that you took care of it. And so, Father, today I hope and pray that you will let everyone here know and those that are watching by video that you said you would never leave us nor forsake us. And that, Lord, when we go through these times, that you are with us, but you've told us to, to cast all those cares on you. So help us to give them to you. Help us to resist the devil that he might flee. Help us to put on the whole armor of God that we might resist the fiery darts of the devil. And, Father, if there's someone watching by video today that's never trusted you as their Savior, I pray that they will trust you today before it's eternally too late. Give us traveling mercies as we leave this place and bring us back this evening at 5 o'clock. And we ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Have a good afternoon. Uh, they say it's going to rain, but I don't believe it because they've been saying it for two weeks and it hadn't happened. Ask my flower.